flashing blue flashing blue flashing blue yeah hey guys i guess um we'll come back to the off grid garage here in sunny um sunny hot sunny sunny australia it's more cloudy actually today but it's good for our test because today i want to fully charge our battery shell for the very first time since we installed all the peter boards so all the three peter boards are now in control of my victron charging system they are telling the mppts how far to charge how much to charge when to stop when to go into constant voltage phase so the peter boards totally take care of the batteries now well, in fact, this is not quite true because the BMS is still in charge of the safety of this battery. Yeah, if there's an over temperature and over current and over voltage, the BMS would turn off our battery bank. But the Peter board in between the BMS and our chargers are taking all the data from the battery from the BMSs and sent this to the Victron system here. And yesterday morning, I have designed a very basic dashboard in Home Assistant where we can now see all the information of all three battery banks on, uh, on one screen. So the times of having three different mobile phones sitting here, watching the battery shelf with all the different BMSs is finally over. We now have this all on one screen. And one, two weeks ago, I made a video about the battery shelf here as well, where we measured the internal resistance of each of the battery banks, because we could always observe that the middle shelf battery is charging longer than the other two batteries once the whole shelf gets full. So when we hit the 55 volts or a bit above, the top battery and the bottom battery, they basically stopped charging then current tapered off and the battery was fully absorbed saturated but the middle shelf battery kept charging at a very high current sometimes 70 80 amps we could see while the other two banks were already under 10 amps and we measured the internal resistance and all three battery banks have very very close very similar internal resistance including all the connections the internal bms and so on and so on and i told you that i've never seen the middle shelf battery charging actually faster or slower than the other two banks because so far i only had my mobile phone and i needed to go from one app into another app to compare the current then i could never really observe a big difference here in charging or discharging current from the middle shelf battery to the other two batteries and hence i said well the middle battery is not charging any different to the other two batteries uh well since i have designed this dashboard in home assistant now showing me all the data of the batteries i must say this was a lie the middle shelf battery is actually charging differently so let me show you what i've designed so now that we have connected all three peter boards to my wi-fi here they automatically show up in home assistant so there's nothing else you need to do home assistant is observing your network and if it discovers any devices it can support it will let you know and you can just click on add to the dashboard and it adds all the data and information about this device to your dashboard but the big plus in home assistant is you can create your own dashboards very very easily by selecting certain values or figures or numbers or settings and then stack them up as you like and build your own custom dashboard and this is what i have done here so far so this took me about half an hour to get this dashboard done so here we start with the top shelf battery it's the jbd bms and i picked and chose from all these available sensors and numbers well only a handful which i will show in this dashboard here so i'm interested in the total battery voltage of course I'm interested in the battery temperature. We've got at least two temperature sensors per BMS. One temperature sensor sticks in between the battery rows and the second temperature sensor sticks in my breaker for this battery bank. That's why I called it a sub breaker temperature. I've got a max cell voltage it shows me. And I've got of course the minimum cell voltage when we discharge the battery. That is an interesting number as well. And the cell voltage delta so I don't need to do the maths. And I was also interested if the balancer of the BMS is actually activated at the moment or not. And then underneath here, I just created two graphs. It does it automatically for you as well. You just select the current sensor of this BMS and say, I want a gauge and bang, here is your gauge. Yeah, green obviously means charging, red obviously means discharging, then we get a negative number. I was also interesting how much power does actually go into these battery banks or so close to 3.5 kilowatt at the moment and underneath there's a very very basic control 
I can disable or enable charging with this switch here, but this switch is not affecting our battery current, so it's not actually physically disabling your charging current into this BMS. This only reports to your inverter or to the Victron system that this BMS is able to take charge. So by enabling it, I'm adding another 100 amp to my CCL, to my charge current limit. So I tell my inverter, you can charge with another 100 amp. And of course I can use this slider here, slow this down or even speed this one up, depending what I like. It will make so much sense in a minute. So obviously this is the top shelf battery here, but I've also copied then this whole dashboard two more times for the middle shelf battery with the JK BMS, with the old JK BMS version one, and also for the bottom shelf battery with the new JK BMS. And I've got exactly the same numbers, the same gauges and the same controls for all three BMSs now here. And this is very cool now because I can compare the actual battery voltage of each battery bank. Even they are in parallel, they are connected to this 600 and 700 amp bus bar in the back. We can see we've got a slight difference in battery voltage here already due to the voltage drop across this, across this um, copper bus bar. And of course, just by clicking on the total voltage of any of the BMSs, it gives me a graph of the battery voltage from the last, I think, 24 hours or so. So you can see it goes down in the night and then in the morning when the sun comes up, battery voltage rises again. And you've got the same for the maximum cell voltage. So yesterday we can see we have reached the 3.43 volts. It was my maximum charge voltage I had in the battery. So I didn't get a full charge yesterday. And you can also click on one of the gauges and it gives you the charge current. So this is all done fully automatically in Home Assistant. You don't need to do anything. It does it all for you automatically. And then you're ending up with such a dashboard in half an hour. So now we can also control the whole charging from Home Assistant now. And this is being done by the Peter Masterboard, yeah, which is in the bottom shelf battery. So if you scroll a bit down here on this side, we can see I have actually added more control features to this one BMS because this is in control of the whole battery shelf now. So here additionally, it gives me information about the charging status. We are in bulk at the moment. Charging is enabled. I've got a maximum charge current of 100 amps set and we can also see the CCL, the charge current limit. This is what all three BMSs combined report to your inverter. And the inverter is not exceeding this value. I can maximum charge my whole battery shelf with 200 amps. And you say, well, you've got 100 amps here, 100 amps here, and 100 amps here. It should show 300 amps. That's exactly right. But as I explained before, I have disabled the charging for the JBD BMS here. If I turn this back on, it will actually tell the master BMS, hey, I can take another 100 amps as well. And it reports this in a second to your inverter. And this will go up to 300 amps. There it is. Yeah. Now your inverter or your MPPTs, whatever you have, would charge with 300 amps. And yesterday I wasn't at home. We had clouds and sunshine as we have today. We had massive, massive spikes in current. And sometimes I watched on the VRM and I could see 280, 290 amps coming from solar into the battery. And to limit this current then, if I'm not at home, I simply go into the dashboard and I click one of these switches. This will take 100 amps away of your maximum charge current and the CCL in your inverter will jump from 300 amps to 200 amps straight away. Yeah. At around 2 p.m. or something, I was at 85% already and I disabled charging for the middle shelf BMS as well. So again, this does not affect your actual charging into the battery, but it tells the inverter, hey, of your maximum charge current, take 100 away and take another 100 amps away. And now you can see the CCL is going down to 100 amps only. If I would disable this one, this would set total charge current limit to zero. And we can already see what happens here. Well, the charge current goes to zero. So this is like a master switch because this is the master BMS, the master Peter. So, and even if I enable the other two BMSs again, say, well, we can take 100 amps each, it will not change the CCL because 
again this is the master yeah the last word is coming from the master and okay so let's turn this back off again so usually i don't disable the master charging i play around with the two slaves here okay turn this back on and now we should see the charge current ramping up again of course there's a cloud at the moment but still we should see some current going in yeah it takes a moment to ramp up and now we can see batteries are getting charged again but maximum 100 amps right i can use this slider now here from the master bms and turn this down to 90 amps yeah it takes a few seconds again and then it reports this 90 amps maximum charge current to your inverter so it would reduce your charge current to 90 amps or i can use the other way around and can say well it can take actually 150 amps for all three bmss and ccl would then change to 150 amps so this is a pretty cool feature now of the peter boards i can disable charging for all my slave bmss here in the system which will still charge and discharge my my battery banks just fine but then I can use the maximum charge current slider of the master BMS to control my whole charging from 2 amps, yeah, CCL of 2 amps, all the way up to 200 amps. So that gives me a whole spectrum of charge current now, which I can modify or control with one slider here from my mobile phone if I'm at the beach, if I'm in a shopping mall, if I'm on the toilet doesn't matter I've got full control about the charging of my system now okay set this back to 100 so this is this is a fantastic feature I could actually do similar things with the DVCC and the charge current limit in there as well from my mobile phone it just takes a lot longer to get there because you need to go to the VRM and then you need to connect to the remote console, go into the settings, go into DVCC and then change the charge current in there. So it takes a lot longer while here is just on your fingertips and a slider back and forward or a switch you turn off and bang, 100 amps less charge current into your battery. And of course, you can now set automations in Home Assistant here and can say, well, if my battery temperature, for example, is over 38 degrees or over 35, whatever you want, turn off the charging enabled switch for the slave batteries and leaves you only with a master BMS and the set current here of 100 amps. So it would automatically reduce your charging current if the battery gets too hot. Or some people were asking about how to slow down charging when the battery gets full. Well, if you want to do this for the purpose because one of your battery cells is spiking and you want to reduce the charge current to give the balancer time to balance out this battery, you should not reduce the charge current in your charger. You should look into the problem of your battery. If one of your cells is constantly spiking when your battery is full, you need to focus on this problem. You need to investigate and fix that, but not by slowing down your charging, but by fixing the imbalance in your battery. But with Home Assistant, the sky is the limit. You can do anything you want. So uh, charge current limit, yeah, we've done that. Um, I can change the absorption voltage here from 55.2 to whatever I like. I can also change the absorption time from 30 minutes to 60 minutes or even lower. I can set my float voltage here and I can set also my rebulk time. So this is all now done through the Peter master board. So and as you can see, this is a very, very basic dashboard. It gives you a few numbers. To, and this is basically a drag and drop task to actually select what kind of values and numbers you want to display in your custom dashboard. And of course, you can also create other dashboards where you have all your 16 battery cells visible and also keeps the data over time. So you are creating a database with graphs and all the information about every single of your battery cells fully automatically in Home Assistant. There's no scripting, database, shit, Grafana, whatever. Home Assistant does it all automatically for you. And going back into my battery shelf dashboard. Well, here's what we can see already now. The top shelf is the one closest connected to my chargers and loads. So this, so you should get the highest voltage and the highest charge current because it is, it is closest to my charger, but also because it has a higher capacity. So the internal resistance, as we have measured as well, is a tiny bit lower because we've got higher capacity cells. But we can see the charge current is actually 37, 29, 32 can see the middle shelf battery is not charging as fast as the other two. And with such a setup, you would expect that the battery closest to your charger is taking most of the current. This one takes a bit less 
and this one takes even less current. But here you can see it's not the case. The bottom battery takes more than the middle battery. Yeah? So something is clearly different in the middle battery and as many of you have speculated under the video already and um, potentially it is the bus bars, the aluminium bus bars from Powerpole, which have now an oxidation layer between the battery terminals and the actual bus bar. And in the last two years, there is some sort of layer in between now. And this probably makes a tiny difference, which manifests here now in the charging current. Interesting also is the cell voltage delta at this point of time, you know, 71%, they should be all fairly balanced. We've got 13, 14 millivolt in the top shelf. We've got 20 millivolt in the middle shelf and we've got only eight millivolt in the bottom shelf. The middle shelf has a higher deviation of all the batteries, even at this lower state of charge. So it can be only either the aluminum bus bars or the old JK BMS, but I doubt it is the JK BMS. I think it is the aluminum bus bars in this middle shelf. And it is not like this is causing a huge issue. It is just what we have observed and trying to make sense out of it. But now seeing all these data in parallel next to each other on one screen here in Home Assistant, we can actually see what is happening while charging and discharging. And the middle shelf battery is clearly the one which charges the, the slowest. And that's why the other two battery banks in the top and in the bottom, they charge up faster. They're getting more ampere hours. So they are on a higher state of charge already. And then when they are fully absorbed at 55 volts, the middle shelf battery needs to catch up. And that's why we have all the current going into the middle shelf battery then. So here clearly this is proof the middle shelf battery charges a tiny bit slower. It's only 5 amps, 4 amps now than the bottom shelf battery. Sometimes it's 15, 20 amps slower when they are charging really fast. But with this setup here, very interesting to see. Okay, I would say without further ado, let's wait for the battery shelf to charge to um, close to 100% and then we want to see if the 0.6 amp balancer can actually handle the bottom shelf battery with 280 ampere hour capacity. We want to see what the deviation is when the balancers turn on all this kind of fun. All right, see you in probably two hours or so. It is cloudy now, who knows? All right, later. Okay, my friends, we have now reached the 55.2 um, volts. So we are in absorption, as you can see here on the Peter board. Let's have a look at the single pack voltages, 55.24.03 and 21. And we can see again that the middle shelf battery is still charging while the other two batteries, top and bottom, are basically fully absorbed. There's a bit current still going into the top battery, but this is a 304 ampere hour battery. so. But here, middle shelf is still catching up, charging with 3.1 kilowatts. And we can also see the balancer is turned on in the middle shelf and bottom shelf battery, while it is not turned on in the JBD, because this is a charge balancer, which I have turned off. So it usually only balances while you are charging. If I still charge with 14 amps here and I'm balancing with 150 milliamps, this is no effect. And because I turned it off, in this case, it will only balance if we show zero amps. So if the battery has fully absorbed at this voltage and then the balancer turns on and has actually a chance to balance our battery pack. But at the moment, it's not too bad anyway. We've got only 32 millivolt deviation in the JBD in the top shelf battery, 67 in the middle and 23 only in the bottom shelf. So, and now we will stay there for half an hour. Absorption time is half an hour. And then we will reduce the voltage by 1.6 volt as per our float voltage settings. And this is all being controlled by the Peter master board. I have also added another parameter in the dashboard, which is the state of charge of each of the battery banks. What the BMS thinks the battery is at. JBD thinks we are at 100%. Perfect. The JK BMS in the middle shelf thinks we are at 100%, perfect. And the JK in the bottom shelf thinks we are at 90% only. So, and if you go back into our main dashboard here, we can see this averages to a 97% state of charge of the battery now, because, um, yeah, I don't know why this one is not 
see the maximum cell voltage is 3.45 volts and it should actually reset to 100% as per our settings. Okay, let's have a look. Settings, additional settings. Here, see the state of charge 100% voltage sits on 3.45 volts, but the state of charge still sits on 90%. Well, that is a bit strange because JK told me that it needs only one battery above this 3.45 volts to reset to 100%. What is our highest? Yeah, cell number six here, 3.45. I don't know why it doesn't reset to 100%. Hmm. Well, here we can see the tiny balance current of 0.6 amps in this BMS, but it looks like it is okay. It's got a deviation of 21 millivolt only. Okay, we have only a few minutes left until we uh, go to float mode. Let's have a look at the graph. 26, yeah, it's another three minutes and then we should see the um, Peter board going into float mode and lowering the CVL, the charge voltage limit from 55.2 volts to 53.6 volts. This is how I'm charging my batteries, but you can change all these settings here very easily with this slider. So the JBD shows a deviation of 60 millivolt, the old JK in the middle shelf 24 millivolt and the bottom battery shows 17 millivolt. Balancer is on, balancer is on, balancer is still off because we are still slightly charging the JBD battery. So I may need to increase my absorption time from 30 minutes to 45 or even 60 minutes to give the JBD more time to balance because so far it hasn't done any balancing at all. It waits for the current to go to zero, but it won't do it. State of charge has increased to 91% here in the new JK, but it still hasn't reset to um, 100. Even all the batteries are above this 3.43 volts I set as the SOAK 100% voltage. Okay, so it's another 30 seconds or so, and then we should see the float mode popping up here and voltage reducing. Okay, there we go, float. And now we should see negative current in all of our batteries. Yeah, so we're slightly discharging until the voltage hits 53.6 volts. So now the question is, when will the PETA board allow us to charge again to 55.2 volts? So this is exactly what the rebulk timer is for here. I have set mine to six hours. So it will stay in float mode now for six hours before it does another bulk charge. Because I think it is enough to have a bulk charge once a day. Charge to 55.2 volts, stay there for half an hour, allow the balancers to do their work, and then we lower the battery voltage to keep the battery 100% charged, but at a lower voltage level. But again, you've got a slider here. You can adjust this as you, as you need, as you want to. But my one will reset in six hours, which is um, at 7.20 p.m. So this is after sunset. But if you hit your float mode earlier in the day and six hours is not enough, you can set this to eight, 10 or 12 hours. So it resets actually in the middle of the night and then the next morning it will start with a fresh cycle again. The Victron system does this automatically. Once there is no power coming in from the solar panels anymore, it, it realizes the day is over and then starts automatically a rebulk. Okay, my friends, so far this video from today showing you the Peter boards in control of the charging of my battery shelf. So far, everything seems to work just perfectly fine. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here for all these beautiful people out there who have donated to the channel. Thanks for your financial support. Thank you for all your comments and likes under the videos, sharing your experience and helping people out. As I said quite a few times, it is the best community out there because we are helping each other and we are getting shit done, right? Okay, until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Now the Peter boards in action. I like it.